All right, everyone. Uh, this is the uh, Krieger Margin One here. Uh, we are on the Hall the eve of Hallow's Eve. We are almost through October Horror Fest this year. This has been an interesting year for sure. We are having two found footage films today. Oh, and speaking of found, look who we found on this nice Hallowed Eve Eve. Nice of you to join us. Let's just get this over with. This is the excellent film of The Taking of Sarah Logan. Deborah Logan. <laughs> That's her name. She forgot her name, so I'm forgetting her name. This is Sarah Logan. This is Deborah Logan. Who's Sarah Logan? A wrestler. We'll kick off the night with uh, some financials. Um, this movie, this movie's budget was one and a half million dollars, and they made four hundred and seven thousand dollars, four hundred and seven thousand seven hundred eighty-two dollars. Those two numbers were hard to find because they were in very, 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 very select theaters. The actual only theaters they went to, they didn't. They were straight to DVD in America, but over in um, foreign lands, they made. They made money. So mm -hmm. actually, the 407000 is their total profit. Not exactly their weekend box office. Their weekend box office internationally was $274,043. The rest of it's from DVD sales. This one dumbfounded me. The audience puts this at a 4.8. And critics put this film at a 9.1, stating that it's nearly perfect. I really liked the actor, actress... For the grandma she did a tremendous job in this in the acting um being in pain being terrified being confused being conflicted being scary as fuck i don't know i know that she did w win an award for this so because they had an award it wasn't like the grammys or anything but it was it was an indie horror award whenever they were going through the alzheimer's patients um th the imagery for them was really unsettling and creepy it really seeped through well it looked like they were petrified more than just dead. It really went through well because the pacing for this, because very early on, they spend some time with, she's a normal grandma, she's kind of antisocial, she's, she's a little racist because she stares at the black guy too much, um, and it seems it seems like they're having a good time either way. So, um, so you get an attachment. Yes, you get an attachment and you go like, that, that's kind of like my grandma, or that's kind of like an old lady I work with kind of thing. And you're like, wow, she's nice. And you're like, whoa, that was a little crazy. Mm -hmm. Oh, that's fucked up. Oh, God, what's she doing to her neck? And as you're going, it's just like, it's super unsettling. This one with the fucking hand thing I've talked about before, that thing is d disturbing and very unsettling and best part of the movie for me because I, I can never... I, I, mm -mm, mm -mm. I, I like horror movies, but that's one thing that I was just like, I can't do that. One small thing that I picked up on is after her first really crazy thing... And she got out from the hospital from the neck. God, what the fuck is going on? There's been a lot of sirens going past her house like last um, minutes before. And just... All day. All fucking day. Anyways, so whenever she was talking about the incident, she was like, evidently I did something. And it was the first hint that she's possessed. And I, I thought that was really good. She's like, I didn't fucking do it. I'm like, what are you talking about? You guys are crazy. Like, she made it sound like the other people were still doing things when they weren't. So that was cool. I did not like it because there's an insidious reference in it. Because they said the word insidious when describing Alzheimer's. Early on, in one of the very first scenes that we seen, see Deborah, she's digging. And then the camera guy looks away and goes back. And she seemingly teleported all across the yard. That's, that's a little, it doesn't make sense for the thing to do that. But okay. The daughter is not a likable actress. And I hate everything about her. And she looks like she smokes and drinks. And she's totally butch so here's my issue it's not even the whole thing i am fine with lesbian characters yeah. I, i'll take a lesbian character in every movie i watch but the way that she portrayed this character i'm trying to think about like motivation for her actions that are going on through this film and i don't feel like most of her actions are justified and after she's kidnapped the kid and went into there and they got and clearly almost killed the cops i wouldn't go in that tunnel what are you going to do to your own mom? Like, come on. At that point, think... she's too far gone. Fucking leave. What does she do for a living? And apparently she lives in the city that's a little bit farther away. And she lives with her girlfriend or whatever. And then she Assumed. she can just take so much time off work. But at the same time, she doesn't have money to pay for some kind of bills she's having. Which she's not in a home. She didn't put her mom in a home. 
she's taking a little bit of medicine but like what are the medical bills that she's paying doctor they've got to be clearly off the charts it doesn't make sense and they're just trying to get an excuse to have a crew in hoarders have money my grandma was a hoarder and she had plenty of money well i can tell you one thing it's never lupus and the final issue that i had was the cgi stars when it's about nighttime anyways we just decided you know what we're missing some fucking I mean, stars there was a couple bits here and then the cgi where i was just kind of like ooh, but they were like quick enough for me to like blink and miss it but i always caught them this time around like the live action cell uh reenactment <laughs> We're not talking about your anime uh, fantasies online. In the ending, well, there's videos. Anyway, um, in the ending, what? What the fuck? The end. <laughs> talking about your own search history. And so now I have to decide my rating on this one. Say something about the ending. Oh yeah, the ending was bad. I didn't like that. Okay, so this film, it's at least a five. It's not above an eight. I'm helping. So I'm gonna give my I'm gonna give it a solid six. This is just above average. Um, I feel like for found footage, this is one of the better found footage films. Mm -hmm. This movie, um, second time watching it, I do enjoy. I agree with a lot of the points that you've said. I don't exactly hate the ending, but I'm not a fan of it. Like it's not. I've I've seen far worse endings than that, but it's very. I think what you're looking for that would probably work for my head better is that it's too cliche of an ending. For me, it, it was just like, um, just a couple of hiccups here and there in the CGI. Um, I like the story of the fact that like, I mean, it's like it's a, it's a possession movie. I mean, a found footage possession movie because a lot of found footage films are possession movies, but the fact that like they're able to tie in mental illness with it, with, like Alzheimer's and like it's, pretty convincing that a lot of the stuff that she does could be caused from her actual illness. Based off of the other movies that we are reviewing this weekend so far, um, this is the better one out of the four. So, probably a 6.8. Almost a 7. Mainly because I like the fact that they make it convincing that it actually could be mental illness until it's actually paranormal. But, little hiccups here and there kind of hurt the film. But, basically what the two of us are trying to say, that this is a pretty decent movie. It's not bad, but it's not a masterpiece. It's a film that you can watch and say, okay, I watched that and I don't hate my life. Kind of grossed out, but I don't hate my life. And I guess as uh, Krieger is fixing food in the uh, kitchen, uh, I will um, transition you to our next review, which will be... Another found footage film. Yep, another found footage film. Is this the record for most found footage films? <sighs> Probably, because we always did one or two, at least one or two every year. We are finishing our trilogy of Hell House, th whatever the fuck you want to call it. So, um, moving on. So, we have concluded our trilogy review of the Hell House series. And, um, I'm gonna let you go first because you seem quite frustrated. I need you to fix the camera first. The audience for this had fewer than 50 people leave a rating for this film, but on those 50 people, um, they left it at a 3.0, and um, it's really weird. Um, the critics gave it a 1.4 for some reason, because it's a beautiful film. Um, and this number really, really confused me. So Vore reported these numbers for their box office and budget, but it doesn't make sense. It says that this company has reported, just as on the previous ones, that what their budget and their box office was. Yeah. Zero. And zero. It, they are claiming that it did not cost them any money to make this film, and it did not. they did not make any money from this. 
they probably want to say that because there actually was like no reported numbers for it. I would say honestly. Unless a bunch of volunteers came through and gave all the supplies for free, and then they decided not to get paid for the movie either, and they didn't want any money from this movie, that would including be a Amazon. Stretch. Especially since they lost, like probably two or three million dollars on the first two movies. Okay, so here's my thing. I really love the story of this. Um, as a trilogy, I love the story. The way it's produced is awful. If they had a big budget Hollywood thing with this story, I think that they could make some really, really, really good films out of this. Unfortunately, name a franchise that's big budget that's also found footage that this this franchise would have benefited from. Paranormal Activity. I knew you were going to say that. <laughs> I hate that series. If it, if they had that kind of production value and money, this film franchise probably would have done a hell of a lot better than Paranormal Activity. I mean, even the final scenes were like, it did. It looked. And produced and sounded like something that like we would make. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Not knocking on us, but we don't have access to a lot of money. But I felt like we probably could have produced something just as good in the ending scenes on the way they were talking. Maybe a hair better, but I just that's my ego. Talking. Just, just, talking. just the scenes of them talking at the end, realizing they're dead. It's like you couldn't have put in some CGI a little bit, made them look a little different. They could hug like. They're in purgatory. Uh, I don't know. I don't know. I didn't like it. I, I, I want to say the dialogue at the very end when they were going in between the credits there. The dialogue was a little bit bad, bad oh, but this I film kind of feel like that that was recorded last minute too. This film was awkward. After watching it the second time, this is my favorite of the three. I'm not, I, I, I was honestly scared to say this. I say, like, even though this film is very awkward and it has a lot of, it has issues here and there, I believe that out of the entire trilogy, this is the strongest film. Yeah, I want to pay attention. The, the first time I watched it through, this is the only one that I was like, wow, I like this. Let's see more of this. I think it's the, I want to say it's mainly the Russell character because Russell's character the premise is good. actually the old. One of the mo more, probably the most intriguing character in the entire movie was Russell himself because he. For me, this entire the entire cast for this one, everyone was interesting and they had their own thing. Even even like the the set the set dude who was really flamboyant and, and the the hard ass fucking guy that was like, well, we're not gonna lose anybody, and then oh, you, you'd be in bed by nine, you know, kind of thing. <laughs> what about the returning cast? Like, do you think they? Were Those just, were good. Like minus their like awkwardly dialogue because that's kind of like how they were in the first movie too i mean they kind of they were fucking stupid all of them are alex all of them i would say alex is stupid uh, and, and they don't remember any of these times that they were like and then after i don't know there's a lot of plot holes in this series and there's a lot of things like this isn't as bad as resident evil but this is bad i'm gonna give this a five because i and as a series i'm gonna give this a five because I really want to like this, but there's just so much that's wrong with it. I can't like it. But it's not bad. It's just not doing enough for me to say this is good. Rating-wise, this film is probably about the same as the other two. Like, for me, it's a six or a six and a half. Because, I mean, there's some stuff that I like that I know you don't like in the film. That I'm like, okay, I can give them some slack when it comes to stuff like that. I like how, how it felt like this finally had, like, a bow... That they at mm -hmm. least it may not have been tied correctly, but at least they tried to tie a bow around this. <laughs> I can't. <guess. laughs> yeah, I mean, I'd have to go for a six on this movie. I mean, that is a lower rating than the first movie itself. It's just so weird that the, the critics rated the first one extremely high, the second one kind of low, and then this one dog shit. One of the one full reviews I was reading on the few people that did leave reviews, one person was saying, you know, after they made a good movie. And the second movie was awful. They build upon the first movie, but instead, they did even worse than the second movie. <laughs> like everyone's entitled to their opinion, but I would say that I would personally disagree with that reviewer because, like, I, think the I in this. it's the pacing's better. And when it comes to comparing it to the rest of the series, like this has the same like elements and the same pacing as the first one. It's a little bit stronger than the first one. And and the director's cut that we watched both times. For the first one, probably made it where we didn't want to watch it because the director's cut is two and a half hours long. Yeah. And there's no need to have that movie. They added like almost another hour of content 
of just people talking and getting to know the characters in the first one when they're really not that important. And I feel like, I mean, they were trying to go for, like, a documentary style for all these movies and whatnot, having, like, people come in for interviews and, and everything. But I feel like in all three movies, they just kind of drop that whole part of the movie because documentary, documentaries don't go strong documentary die out halfway through like an hour long special in the last five minutes oh wait this is a documentary guys that goes out throughout the entire thing like if they would have stuck i know that'd be really bad on like interjections and everything but if it's a documentary stick with it the documentary i feel like they did good on that um one thing i would have liked which would have been a good twist that they could have done is um maybe in this okay so you know how this entire time there's this that one his like skeptic kind of guy old guy facebook by the way throughout all these movies is supposed to take place over several years the guy looks exactly the same um like he just recorded it in the same year Fucking what if the bigger dude was evil the whole time and he was orchestrating all of this that would be a good twist in the very end instead of having a cool little Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Have it be like, oh, this isn't actually a documentary. This is like a uh, autobiography that I'm writing before I kill all of these people. I want to say my biggest problem with this movie is the fact that, like, it is, it's a lot of callbacks to the first film and hints here and there in the second one, mainly to the first one, though. But whenever, like, they're going through parts of the house and the camera kind of, like, fucks up and everything and it shows a scene from the first one that matches, like, the room they're walking into and whatnot, I feel feel like they did that too much a little bit's okay but they, it was at least one of one of those scenes every every 10 minutes when big shit was happening it was consistent. like i mean like and bigger like in bigger parts i would get it but it was like happening even in the little scenes too like it was just like oh look this is this is the room that this person died in and i'm but like they also changed things like with the whole heaven thing that had a whole nother concept to that and even after uh they started, like, fucking killing everybody. They knocked over an angel, like, a fallen angel. And the devil's the fallen angel. And mm-hmm. it's, like, his signal. They're just, like, it's little messages that they were doing. Like, yeah. It was not. And I want to say, like... And that song was almost trolly by the third movie. <laughs> like, a uh, year fucked. Year. Ding, ding, yeah. ding, 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 ding. And, I don't know, it's just, I feel like that end credit scene with the dialogue and like the very end when they're outside looking at the damage from the fire and everything. Did they just shoot those last two scenes last minute? Because it looks like they ablibbed or like just improv the whole thing. And it just, the only thing that would have been worse is if they used scenes from insert scene from the, um, Lamageddon when the voice, the voices didn't go. They voiced over. That, I mean, I guess this film kind of, like, makes... I don't know why. It makes me rec- recollect how the year has gone for some reason. Just since that, and it's the first time we reviewed an entire trilogy in one year. This film has the same feeling as the first one, but I feel like besides the last, those last ten minutes with that horrible dialogue, it delivers better than the, the first film. Not well, though. It just delivers better. Like I always like to say... A polished turd is still a turd. I, like I said, we're not trying to say we hate the Hell House trilogy because... I'm completely indifferent to it. I'm, I, I want to like it, I can't. It's 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 kind of like that. Like, I mean, I enjoy this more than 90% of the found footage films in any genre that I've seen in my lifespan. But it's not one of my favorites. Yo, yo next time we pick movies, um, I gotta pick the Paranormal Activity uh, series. As a trilogy as itself, um, I honestly would have to, I, I'd have to agree with, I, I have to say, agree with you too, because like, it kind of just sits in the middle, like, it's a, it's, it's a movie franchise that you can do without seeing it. You can do completely without seeing it. Like, it's, it's, you're not going to die if you don't watch this series. This is Mike Check 95, and we are going to have one more movie night. So we always try to get at least one theatrical movie in every year. 2021's Halloween Ends. And I am kind of excited that we're watching it on the night of Halloween. And hopefully this film is better than the 
first one, if not as good, because I've seen the first one. But we are signing out, and we'll catch you in the final night of Horror Fest and whatever other projects you find us for.